Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, we've got not a lot of news, but we do have some feedback emails from you and a great roundtable discussion on Hardcore vs. Casual, the ultimate showdown. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here on the Sound Strategy Network. You can find us at talesoftyria.com. This is uh, going to be a great show for you. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of news, but we're going to try and give you a show with a lot of interesting discussion directly relevant to Guild Wars 2, because that's what we are, Guild Wars 2 podcast. If you're watching the video of this, you may notice that there's not a lot of of interesting video content. That's because we don't have the game yet, but this is also sort of a a recording of an audio podcast. So this is designed to be listened like a talk radio show. Listen to it in your car, at the gym, you know, things like that. When you're doing monotonous housework, for example, that's the idea. So I do apologize for not being able to show you some really cool, awesome visuals, but that's, that's what we're starting with. Um, we're starting with Myself, Bridger, here in the upper corner of the screen. I am going to welcome you to the show as I just did and now also introduce you to the other co-host here on the show. Freelancer, welcome to the show. So as far as the podcast is concerned, those listening aren't going to have any, uh, not going to understand what's going on here, but you have Aku as Kai right now. I do? Oh, Shut by up. the way, Bridger, hi. <laughs> well, now I'm going to have to fix that, but I'll fix it later. Uh, also joining us on the show, Aku, and I hope this comes up correctly. It does. See? He's Aku. It says so right there. Um, and yeah, if you're not watching, you're missing out on the uh, hilarity that takes place on the live recording, because we're doing it live here. Um, so also joining us, we have the Das Uber Vega himself with his uh, no hat wearing person, but that's okay. Put one on real quick over my head headphones. <laughs> yeah, wearing headphones kind of precludes it, doesn't it? I don't know. Aku seems to figure it out every week, but we're, we're, too, we're, we're, not, we're not as cool as he is. I can't. I don't want to, like, sweat. If I wear that, I'm going to be sweating here. I do They're have gross. that, don't I? All right. Well, I'm going to have to fix that. In the meantime, what we are going to do <laughs> is talk about the news of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is some, probably some of the best news uh, anybody could have ever expected to come out this week. Uh, Eric Flanham confirms that he was incorrect in his previous statement that custom emotes were not in the game. They actually are in the game. Which, as far as I can tell, means slash me eats a banana will display as Bridger eats a banana in the game. And that's way important to some people. Like, really important. So, for those people, awesome. That's good Victory. news. Victory. Victory. Yes, I think that's the correct <laughs> response. Um, but yeah. You know it's bad when the best news we've had all week is using custom emotes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I figured there was going to be a doldrum before the actual open beta because the closed beta, everything's in NDA and, and we're just not going to get any new information until they're ready to release it. They, you know, the, the December we knew. We were like, okay, we know. They said they're going to release the last class before the end of the year. They said we're going to get information about the beta before the end of the year. So they had this massive thing we knew was coming. But now we have no idea what their timetable is. They might not have anything to be released until the end of February for all we know. In that case, just just shoot me now because I'm going to be trying to hold together a podcast for the next four weeks. All right. <clears throat> well, we've got a lore show. We've got a lore show to do, and I should talk about that next week. We're going to have a, to a show about lore as far as I can, you know, hopefully getting some cool people that know about lore more than I do to come on next week. But 
in addition, I'm going to try to have a review of the first uh, book that is uh, that is was released in the Guild Wars 2 universe, the uh, Ghosts of Ascalon. So if you don't want any spoil, we'll probably probably try to do a non-spoiler review and then a spoiler review at the end if we had anything specific to say about it. So anybody who wants to follow along at the later review, that would be cool. Uh, check it out. Ghosts of Ascalon. It's available on, you know, local bookstores everywhere, blah, 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 Amazon, etc. So I'm going to be checking that out and giving you guys a review on it. And let's go on to the feedback because we do, in fact, have a email that you can send us information on. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com is how you can get it to us. And uh, so the first email sent to us, oh, I didn't write down the author's. That is the first fail of the day. And by first, I mean the Second one fail. after making Aku <laughs> into Kai. I guess that's just my fantasy. <clears throat> so um, <laughs> let me read the email, and then I'll get to who sent it at the end, you know, like, like how they normally put the signature at the end. Um, okay. So he says, since this is Guild Wars, should guilds be able to go to war with each other in PvE? Both guild leaders would need to declare war. Either one of them could call it off any time, limited to one war at a time, etc. He says, with dynamic events, you quote-unquote never know what you may find, but with guild wars in PvE, you would always have to be on your toes. He's sort of thinking along the lines of a PvP server. Um, and and that's, that's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, that email comes to us from uh, Mike, Miko. Miko, thank you for the email, Miko. Actually, the... First thing that that kind of reminds me of is the wars in EVE, because the way that EVE works is if you're in the outer sectors of the galaxy, there's no law. There's no law at all. You can do whatever you want. But if you're in the inner sectors, you can't fight other players without the police coming after you. And the way that you avoid that is you basically declare war. But what that incorporates is paying off the authorities so they will look the other way when you go and attack other people of this specific faction, this specific corporation. So then you get to attack each other until, um, you know, the money runs out. And then they have to pay to keep the war going, essentially, in the inner sectors. It's a very interesting concept. Uh, now, what do you think, Aku, does that kind of thing belong in a game like Guild Wars 2, considering all of the other uh, systems and, and sort of the philosophy of the game? Um, I don't know. I mean, considering that, well... Guild Wars, considering that it is the title, it should probably be in the game logistically. <laughs> but um, I don't, I don't know. I think the the world v world v world kind of covers that kind of fine. I mean, um, on that playing field, if you do have two guilds that are you know all there at the same time, I guess you can kind of fight there. But I don't think they necessarily need to put something structured in that regard. All right, so. This is sort of coming from an interesting situation where we don't have the guild versus guild that we talked about in the Guild Wars Legacy episode. So it would, it's, it's kind of like everybody on the server is all on the same team, quote unquote. But at least in the world versus world, you're going to be against other players. Um, Freelancer, do you think that they would ever add that kind of a functionality in where you could have a guild versus guild like we saw in Guild Wars 1? Do you see that ever happening? I think it's already in. Think about it. Um... You have guilds that can set up arena teams. I mean, if I know that I like, if, if Team Legacy has another guild says, "Oh, our guild's better than yours, better than yours." What do you think naturally is going to happen? You're going to have, okay, well, put up your best arena team. I mean, how else? Can Are you, you really asking do for it? a challenge? <laughs> the duel. <do-all. laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, because you know you got that ability to set up custom or theoretically custom games. You know, right? And then a uh, structured PvP. So I completely see that. You know, we say, all right, what map do you want? What, uh, you want to do five man? You want to do six man? You know, classic GVG? What do you want to do? And, uh, just go out there and do that. I think that is guild versus guild. I mean, right there. Um, as far as our guild keep attacking your guild keep, I think that's going to happen naturally. Imagine, like, our server gets pitted up against this other server, and this other server has this notorious name. Everybody's talking about them in, in the community. Well, yeah, naturally, our guild is going to want to be the guild that goes and takes on another server and right there is guild versus guild so i I think it's already in the game it's just people have to really see it and experience it all right so 
<clears throat> thanks to uh, Miko for sending that in to us. Uh, again, if you want to send in feedback, we'd love to get people's questions about what they want us to talk about and, and, and other things about, you know, what's your opinion of this in Guild Wars 2, etc. So if you have anything you think you'd like to hear the panel discuss here, send it to feedback at talesoftyria.com. And let's see, uh, here is an email from Steven. Now, he sends a pretty long email, so I'm going to try to cut to the chase here. He basically says, hey, guys, love the show. Uh, you, you know, he, he basically says we, he appreciates that we don't blindly bash the game or blindly accept it. That's a rare quality, etc. Thank you very much for the compliment. Uh, moving on to the heart of his email, he says... Uh, quote, I myself was an avid Guild War II cynic and touted Star Wars The Old Republic as the next big thing. Yet the more information I dug up about Guild Wars II, the more I was intrigued, and I now believe I may, they may actually pull off what they say. Star Wars The Old Republic is great but, and what, at what it's trying to do, but it's not trying to do much. Everything is literally the same as every other MMO, except the story, which is its saving grace. I was thinking it would be nice for the group to actually confront the ongoing argument of Guild Wars II versus Star Wars The Old Republic. I realize this is asking to open quite a large can of worms. Editor's note, yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> quote, but it's an important and rather large discussion at this point, and it really boils down to whether or not refining the old ways is better than complete departure from them. So that is a very interesting way to end the email. I think it's a very poignant question, is because that really is what it boils down to, re whether refining the old ways is better than complete departure from them. So, Jay... What is your initial thought? Let's just say somebody says, I'm going to make the next World of Warcraft. Would you prefer that they refine it or just say we're going in a completely new direction? What's your gut reaction? Um, to not refine it because I feel like it's already been refined <laughs> to hell. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, it's it's I feel that companies just copy it because, well, WoW is pretty successful, so... If we make something similar to WoW, then maybe we'll be as successful. But I, the, the reason why I like what Guild Wars is doing is because they are taking a huge risk by you know, trying to rewrite the script. And if they can manage to pull it off, it'll, it'll be a huge victory just for MMOs in general. Because then maybe companies will be a little more ballsy and not just copy what other MMOs are doing. Freelancer, are you happy to see Guild Wars 2 going in a different direction as well? Uh, yes and no. I mean, we all have to kind of take a step back and admit that World of Warcraft did something right. You know? Let me sit up here, sorry. Um, and, uh, but they, they, with Lord of the Rings coming out and, and Warhammer coming out and, and the fact that they tried to take all of these different aspects like achievements the lore book and all this and try to kind of incorporate into that wow i, I think they they lost sight of their original image that made it so popular now it's just a. Uh, I mean let, let's all take let's all just be honest here wow is now just a mishmash of all the latest mmos features in one game okay it yeah. used to be great but that's what it is now and it's original it can if everybody remembers that when a wow originally came out and all of the original content and just how fluid animation was for example it was a good game i mean even the biggest wow hater however you want to word it, it can admit that back in the original days it was a good game but they've just strayed so far away now steve um I believe that steven his yes. name steve brings up a good point guild wars 2 versus star wars it, those, those are two very different games. Star Wars aims to be a Dragon Age online, you know, but with Star Wars theme. I mean, that's that's what it, that's its own thing, and and it's got its own, you know, you have multiple worlds and universes. Whereas Guild Wars Two is centered in on a much more localized uh, area. So I, I don't think you really can compare the two games. Yeah, you can compare the combat. I mean, obviously Guild Wars Two is more fluid and um, you can compare storylines, I guess, but it's still two very different things. I don't think that even if we did have that argument, that it, either side would get any points across because they're so different. Well, <clears throat> let's start by trying to discuss what I think Star Wars did right in comparison to a lot of the other 
um, MMOs out there. First of all, I was talking to a bunch of my friends who are playing it avidly, um, and they were involved in the the sort of launch of the game. And, and forgive me if I get some of these details wrong because I'm getting these secondhand. But the the launch sounds like they did something that I had not heard done before. And again, that could be wrong because it could have been done somewhere else. But basically, they had a guild launch where people would sign up for it to be a certain guild, for example. So Guild A would have all of their members sign up. Uh, as being part of that guild, and Guild B would have all of their members su- being signed up as, as being part of that guild. And then each guild leader, the person that had you know the ability to control the guild you know syst- settings in, in the in, on the website in the account, would be able to declare and make connections with other guilds and say this is a partner guild or an adversary guild. So that if you were, you know, making a guild with your real life friends, but you know some online friends that were making another guild and you wanted to make sure that you were all on the same server, but maybe they were making a Sith guild and you were making a Republic guild, you could easily um, basically say, okay, that's that's my adversary guild. And you could, I think, declare like two or three of each, something to that effect. And then after that, you know, Bioware threw that all in a giant computer. And the computer spit out this, you know, basically conflagration of, of, of choices and saying, okay, you guys all go on this server, you guys all go on this server, you guys all on this server. So it just assigned everybody servers, but it didn't force you to pick that server. It basically said, here's the server we think that you should just tell your whole guild to take, and then everybody, all the other guilds that you specified are also being told to take this server, etc. So... That sounds like a really innovative way, and I haven't heard any major problems with the launch in terms of population. Have you guys? I haven't heard anything. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, I hope that ArenaNet's taking notes when based on this launch, because this is the other big launch that's that's happening, basically. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it'll come down to how they structure their servers and everything. You know, I mean, everyone wants to because like Guild Wars One was easy because there was one server, everyone was able to play with everyone and yeah. that was one thing that was hard about the wow for example is that there's all these different servers so i'm sure everyone's been in a situation where oh i'm on whatever server and my friend's like oh i just started playing but i'm on this other server Ah, uh, well i guess we can't play together until you know unless one of us transfers or something um so it's good that before the game launched they were trying to get you know groups of people together to kind of build that experience yep yep so that's that's one of the things that I heard that's that I thought was a really useful adaptation essentially to the current world, which is when World of Warcraft launched, there weren't like prearranged guilds per se. I mean there might have been a very small minority of them, but when Star Wars launched, there were tons and tons of people that are either migrating from other MMOs or groups of friends that decided to make guilds and all wanted to be on the same server. So I thought that that was a uh, a very good adaptation to the the current environment. So I have to say that uh Oh, sorry, it looks like I lost the stream there for a second. Um, I have to say that was a, a very good adaptation. Um, but much like the original poster, Steve here says, based on everything that I've heard in the videos, like Total Biscuits videos that I've watched, Star Wars is basically World of Warcraft with a much better narrative stuck in there. It's like if World of Warcraft made you want to kill yourself every time it said, kill, a, kill another ten of these guys and I'll give you this ruby. You know, it's just like, oh, God, (laughs) there's no information. There's no reason. There's no compelling, like, I want to find out what happens next. And Star Wars, from all that I've seen, did a fantastic job of really giving you that cinematic presentation of a story with interesting things going on. Even if it wasn't like, you know, the mystery that made you want to just keep reading the book or whatever, it was still something that really made it much more engaging, as far as I could tell. Now, that's not enough for me, I don't think, because I'm not a big Star Wars person, but um, I don't know. That, that that was, I think, Freelancer and I hit on the same point where we watched videos and heard about it enough to the point where we're like, yeah, we don't want to play that. Yeah, it's it's. I feel like it's more for people who are really into Star Wars. Yeah. And if you're really into Star Wars, you're going to love the game. You know, that's. it sounds like that's what it is because they go so much into the story. But there is something that Star Wars isn't going to have that WoW has over it, and that's Pandas. <laughs> can't forget about pandas you're not gonna and, let us forget about pandas <laughs> and poke and pokemon battles pandas and pokemon battles essentially that's right i forgot they were gonna have, have the all the battles. If, 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 for anyone who doesn't know the new wow expansion is pretty much gonna be a pokemon mmo yeah. if, you could go out you could get pets you could bat like literally when I, when I was watching blizzcon and he was talking about this pet system i was like 
you're describing Pokemon. Is is this a joke? Is there a punchline? <laughs> At the end, it was but, like April Fools. Yeah, no. but I mean, I mean, some people are gonna love that, and maybe that's maybe that's something that's gonna really change MMOs. I don't know, but <laughs> could be, could be. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think everybody here kind of agrees that we're glad that Guild Wars Two is going in a different direction than other games. I mean, the last game that sort of disheartened that I was disheartened by with the let's polish the WoW formula was Warhammer Online because it was basically World of Warcraft. I mean, it used all of the same sort of mechanics, but they added and made them just that much more polished and better, except for, of course, the animations and the and the controls, which is the crucial part that World of Warcraft got right. Uh, but, you know, I love the, the tome of knowledge that you slowly fill in and the monsters that you find and all... That was like a fantastic way of doing an achievement system. Um, and, and there was a lot of other things that I liked the way that they changed it in, in, in Warhammer Online. But in the end, it still wasn't enough to grasp, grab me and keep me there. So clearly, I need something new. I need something different. And that's why we started this podcast here. And then, uh, there we are. So I think that um, pretty much covers our thoughts on the Old Republic. We don't want to bash it because for what it's trying to do, it does a fantastic job. It's just that those mechanics I- are... Just they're they're worn out for me. I'm jaded. I do I do feel like that it's not really um, like a rivalry. Like I don't think of yeah they're they're very different. Guild Wars games. two and Star Wars as being you know it's I don't see it as like Call of Duty and Battlefield you know that sort of rivalry and you're either one or the other or you're a bastard or something you know it's, well no it's either you're you're Battlefield or you're a bastard. I mean Call of Duty yeah, lost yeah, all but... credit with all the gaming community back in. Uh, when they started shipping out those uh, side games to who is it that does their other games besides Infinity War does the main game and then they ship it out to sure the yeah there you go so Call of Duty 3 they just oh let's put it on console give it to these guys it's big red one it's like no thank you This, this they, they ended any relationship with me after Call of Duty 2 basically anyway yeah. that's an entire another can of worms that we are going to try to keep Post- in the freaking can close that word close that can there you go alright <laughs> <clears throat> moving on to an entire other can of worms here. There we go. Got it right here. The ultimate showdown between hardcore and casual. I mean, not really. We're not we're not having an actual showdown between. It's not a versus, but that's a really good way to market it to get people to watch the show. But um, listen to the show. Listen to the show. <laughs> but it is a very interesting topic because people always split communities, especially MMO communities, by the terms hardcore and casual. What the hell makes somebody hardcore versus casual? What does that even mean? Um, so let me let me ask the panel here. Let's start with uh, Aku. Aku, what does hardcore mean? What does casual mean? Can we define it? Can we put down in a set it like this is what defines hardcore, this is what defines casual, and this is other, and you don't want to be that other. It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel there there is a distinct uh, definition for both hardcore and casual. Um, starting with casual, I've always felt that casual is – or a casual gamer in the MMO front is always a person who – would plays the game for you know for fun. They play the game to have fun. They play the game to you know um, you know be with friends or you know or, or meet new friends or or you know just experience the game for what it is. Um, and through that, uh, that really kind of defines that almost kind of defines what I feel a hardcore gamer is um, in the sense that they take the game a lot more seriously. They are not just like, oh, you know, I'm just going to put random points into a talent tree and hope that I do well. No, these are people who are, you know, doing the math, you know, going on, you know, you know, other, you know, uh, min-maxing sites to figure out what is the best, you know, what is the best that they can do to become the best player in this game. And also through that, they put a lot of time in, in the game as well as outside the game. So, I mean, there, there is a kind of a, a clear definition, but actually from what I've actually been reading, there is a, a hardcore casual which kind of boggles don't, my mind, but... Don't even go into that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Metro casual? Metro core? Is that what we're There's going mid-core. on here? Mid-core. Mid-core. Mid-core, they're calling it now? Yes. Ah. yes. Mid-core. Psych- psychologists are actually using the term, um, I think you can find it in a couple different sites too, called huh. mid-core, which is like the difference between, the in-between of a casual versus hardcore. And then, of course, you got pro too. You know, we're just oh, hitting yeah. hardcore and casual, but there are... 
technically, depending on who you ask, four different groups there. But I don't really think you can place anybody in any specific group. You know, it's it's kind of silly. But for the sake of 90% of all the internet that do place people in those groups, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you Care Bear noob, get out of this game. We don't appreciate your suggestions. We want to gank people. So... Yeah, sorry, I turned into the in raging internet nerd there for a second. Interesting stats here I'm going to pull up if I get the right button. There it is. Um, this is from GW2Census.com, and this is a bunch of self-reporting by about 5,000 people, and basically uh, a, a number of different stats. You know, character gender, which let me pull that one up first, by the way, because this is very interesting. We've got character gender, which is the first thing I saw. It's the first thing that's on this list. And I look and go, wow, 36% female. This is great. Guild Wars 2 is not going to be a sausage fest. And then somebody says, no, 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 click player gender. And then we take a look at that chart, and it looks quite different as uh, we can now see here. Oh, 11%. Well, that makes more sense. So what that tells you is if, if this science is correct here, that two-thirds of all female characters out there are actually guys. And I think that sounds just about right as far as, <laughs> as my experience has taught me. But uh, going back to the hardcore or casual part, they actually had uh, three options in here, if I recall correctly. They had hardcore, casual, and noob. I don't know why that was – or who was self-reporting as a noob. I thought – I completely suck at this game. I'm just going to like... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I only play this once a month. You know? <laughs> so, I always see this as a sort of continuum, right? And, and that's why it's so hard to nail down what is a hardcore and what is a casual. Anytime you have a continuum, you know, if, it's, if you have somebody who's like, how old are you? Are you over 26 or are you under 26? Well, that's easy. That's that's a continuum that has a hard line in the middle, but it's when there's fuzzy lines that you can't really – this is not going anywhere. Continuum, right? Let's go back to the continuum part. On this side, you have people that have basically dedicated all of their leisure time to gaming. And on this side, you have people that have other things that they do in their leisure time and – they're just like, uh, sometimes I decide to play games and sometimes I prefer to read a book, sometimes I prefer to go rock climbing, whatever. Basically, I always see hardcore versus casual as part of this continuum based upon how you prioritize gaming within your leisure time activities. If you prioritize it third, you know, after uh, rock climbing and reading or after TV and, um, I don't know, music – then you're not as hardcore as somebody who dedicates it as their first thing. And somebody who has it as their first thing, but then, you know, they go bike riding and they go out clubbing and all this other stuff. Those people are not as hardcore as the people that only have one hobby and it's gaming. So I disagree. You disagree. All right. I disagree. I'm What's sorry, you Bridger. You're so wrong. <laughs> all right. That's why all right. I bring him on the show, all. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is this is a, a this is our duel here, Bridger. All right, no, a hardcore player is not somebody that just plays a ton of time, you know, a ton of hours a week. If you play eighty hours a week and you're you're just horrible, you it doesn't make you hardcore. Just the same as somebody that is studying all the guides, is min maxing and stuff, is a hardcore player. Neither of those two actually define a hardcore player. You're saying that somebody that prioritizes. Um, uh, let's say over their sports practice, you know, they rush home to get on the computer and play games all day. That's not a hardcore player. I mean, and that's the only stat you said so far, right? So not, not in the least bit. It's a, it's a mentality. It's an attitude. It's a, it's an intellect that somebody has to have to actually be a hardcore player. In that particular uh, graph you looked at there, I, was, I just saw you pull up. I never actually saw that before. Um, you have... What was it? Over 50% 51. of people 51.1% saying, saying hardcore, 44% saying casual, and 4.8% self-reporting as noob. Yeah, see, how much time... I'd bet anything that... All right, those 50% have no idea what eat hardcore even means. I mean, can anybody listening to this... And, and this is not right or wrong. Just, just ask yourself, do you truly know what is a hardcore player? No. No, not many people can actually say they are because there's no set definition. Now, going back to your point, Bridger, um, hardcore is a is a state of mind. It's it's a it's a development um, 
setting that you put yourself in as a gamer to say that I am going to be the best at this game no matter what. It, it is a something way beyond to say I'm going to put this much time into this game. It, it's it, it's it's hard to explain, but I could play for a hundred hours a week, which is completely unhealthy, mind you. But <laughs> <laughs> but I could, and it wouldn't make me a hardcore player. It would just make me an idiot. See, I disagree. And, I think that's how most people use the term, whether they think so or not. But when they wrong. define a hardcore player, yeah, I, that's how they're using the term. And I don't think it's wrong either. I think what you're defining is a competitive player, which is not the same as hardcore. You can have hardcore people that are just, they don't have the right mindset and they'll never be any good. That happens all the time because hardcore is a self-reported definition a lot of the times. And obviously, you know, we're having this de- this definition d- result over semantics because there is no real set definition, especially well, in any language. There's no set definition for most many words. They're changing all the time based on people's perceptions. But I think that in this case, if you ask people, the consensus would be hardcore versus casual is a measure of how much time you spend with the game and there are other words to describe somebody's skill or somebody's m- state of mind when it comes to I, gaming i'm kind of in the middle in that i think there is a correlation between hardcore and time spent if 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 you want to be competitive or if you want to be a hardcore player you're going to be putting in more time but i think it also comes down to um rage in that <laughs> How? <laughs> how serious? So if you're Trindamir, you are really hardcore. How how serious do you take the game? Because, you know, you could be a also. There's also I think there's a difference between a hardcore gamer and then someone who is hardcore in a certain game. You know, like I could play sixty hours a week, but it's split between six games or ten games. You know, but what what it comes down to is when you're playing a game. How serious do you get into it? If you lose a fight, do you get seriously upset? Or do you just say, it's a video game, I had my fun, I'm going to go do something else? Do you, when you lose a fight, do you try and com- always better yourself and take it to heart? And I think that's where it comes down between hardcore and casual is how serious do you take the game? And that comes back to my point, which was people that prioritize it over other things in their lives take it more seriously that's that's sort of well, what no, i was I'm trying to I'm get not at. talking about i'm talking i'm not talking outside the game i'm talking inside the so game so it's also a state of mind if in you, the if, game if you're you saying. if if you only played the game for an hour a day let's say you, you you're not a hardcore gamer in the sense that you don't play a lot of hours a week but when you do play you p- give all your energy and you take it very seriously i still consider that being hardcore just because you're not putting in as much time as so-and-so, you're still taking it very seriously. Okay. I think, I think Vega's hitting on, hitting on it uh, more correctly than I was. It's, it's your efficiency. How about that? It's, um, it's a matter of when you are playing and if you lose or you win, how much time you're putting into it afterwards or before the matter. Take, a, take like a bas- – let's, let's step out of the computer realm for a second. Let's say you got a basketball team and you got – it's a high school team. Everybody's playing on the team. Some may not really want to be there. Others really want to be there, right? When the, the game and the practice is over, which of those players goes home and then spends – another three hours actually on their driveway shooting some more hoops practicing that three-pointer for example um or which of those kids actually go home and study basketball uh tactic strategies and and other players etc and learn after them which of those players do that that would be the hardcore player now which of those players go home and could care less maybe joke about it but they never do a single thing other than go back to the next practice the next day you know that that's kind of um what I see a hardcore player as because that hardcore kid, that the guy that really wants to be that much better at basketball, he's, he's doing extracurricular things to help improve. It's just the same as in wow, a hardcore player is going to be the type of player that goes to wow armory consistently. Or if he fails a raid and he gets wiped or his guild gets wiped, it's not going to be okay, better, better luck next time guys, or, or let's just laugh it off and have a good time. Um, it's going to be that guild leader that, crunches down, looks at the tactics, maybe possibly looks at a replay, gets with the different members of the group and, and, and just breaks it all down. And that's that's a hardcore player. And, so, um, so, what it's, so your definition of hardcore is sort of synonymous with dedicated or invested in. Is that, would that be correct a, to say? Efficient. 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 Okay. Yes. 
So it's still it's still about efficiency with you, is it? Uh, <laughs> stupid. Why do we let an accountant on the show? Who screamed this guy? All right. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk then about because there's always sort of an elitism that seems to come from people who self-report as hardcore. Uh, people who think oh, God, that they yes. are hardcore, you see a lot of elitism coming into, no, this is my game because I know more about it than you do, and you're just a Care Bear. What do you only, you noob, don't know how, didn't only level 33. Clearly, you don't know what you're talking about. Kind of a, a thing that you see. Now, do you think that elitism comes from the time that has been invested, or 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 or, or is that... You know, just people will be a dick no matter what, and there's always going to be a certain percentage of that in every gaming group, no matter how you split it. I I think that just no matter if if you have a group of people who are going to be good at the game, you're always going to have that elitist that elitist bunch. Um, I mean, you have. You, I mean, I'll take I'll take the NBA. You'll have people. You know, uh, I'm not exactly sure of any professional players who are rather humble about their, you know, their achievements. And then you have people like LeBron who kind of just like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the best, you know. So I mean, I'm not saying that either one are, are aren't great players, but they are great. But it's just, um, in the sense that because of the fact that they're both great, there is going to be a divide from the narcissistic elitist people to the people who are just like, hey, yeah, I'm good at the game. Let me help you out, kind of thing. It's also possible that the 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 sort of elitist jerks are the ones that you notice because they're the only ones you know shouting their mouth off and the humble people usually don't wind up talking. It's actually <laughs> it's probably that more than anything else to the same effect where where you see like an entire forum full of people raging about this one bug, and yet the forum is like 1% of the community. Maybe it represents the entire community or maybe 99% of the community has no problem with that specific bug. And so you could look at that and say, well, clearly there's a huge problem. Everybody in the game is having this problem. No, no, that 1% is having the problem and that's why they're all in the forum. Everybody else who loves the game is out and playing it. So you have, I don't even know, how did I get on top of this? Okay, um, Wait, I, got, I can bring it back. <laughs> bring it back to it. I have no idea where I was going um, with that. Wow. So I, I think <laughs> that there is a relationship with rage that stems from the amount of time you need to be in a group to do an activity um, successfully. For example, if you're in WoW and you're doing a raid, you know, raids take a while and you've got to coordinate a lot of people. Rage stems from when you have, or the elitists stem from people who are hardcore and they're doing these raids and they're investing all this time into it and then they get pissed off when you know it doesn't go well and they get all you know it's it fails because of someone making a mistake or something so i think that there's a i'm going to say correlation again there's a correlation again between time spent with a certain group and the amount of i don't even know if this is making sense the amount of work it takes to do something successfully for example um you know, if you like, like I said, with the WoW raid, it's a lot of time and a lot of effort. People get pissed off. A Dota game, it's a decent amount of time and a good amount of effort, and people rage all the time. But if you take something, you know, like how many ragers do you see in like Team Fortress 2, where the games are, you know, 10 minutes for a match or something like that? You know, I feel that it's more prominent in an activity that takes a longer amount of time. <coughs> Dota, MOBA, yeah. <laughs> League of Legends. It, it, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I Sorry, had something uh, in my throat. Sorry, go ahead. It but, needs to be. It needs to go ahead. No, I was gonna correct myself and not say Dota and say. Well, what is it, a, I'm AOS? gonna have to. I'm gonna have to correct like like I do so often, and I refer them to uh, Webster's and otherwise. That elitists are usually uh, misnomers where you can't really use the word elitist or the word elitist because they don't really know what the word means. Elitist requires that you have, by definition, a group of elite that is held to a standard. And is not necessarily a bad term by definition. Now, what a lot of players, especially kids in MMOs, um, think an elitist is is simply just somebody that superiority has, complex has has yeah has a superiority complex or, or just thinks they're so much better than other people, so they look down on other people. That's not an elitist, not by any means. That's a snob. That's a that's an idiot. That's, that's true. A jerk. That's true. Gotta... An elitist. An elitist is somebody that has reached the stance of what's considered to be the elite in a group, okay, and philosophical group, meaning it could be the gladiator status as well, okay? 
And then by reaching that status, they immediately assume that they are somehow better than other players. That that, that status actually incorporates the idea that other people should respect them. That is a true elitist. So an elitist is not somebody that just has a bad attitude. Stop using that term for those kind of people because those are just uh, – I'm not going to say that word on, on the podcast, but those are fill in your blank here. I mean <laughs> that is not an elitist, and you're using the, the word wrong. It's um, it, it's just – I don't know. Elitism is always going to be a problem in MMOs, so it's just one of those things how you deal with it because most people that – complain about elitists are actually worse than the actual elitists themselves in a lot of cases and i see that pretty often in a guild environment i see it in um uh, in a on a larger environment especially in, in mmos where you have these group of players that they're they're what they enjoy doing while talking casually is bashing on what they call the elitist group or the elitist uh member and Unless you're actually third party looking in on it, you would never know that those those people that are actually calling the others elitists are really the problem here. And that's a whole other t- topic, so we'll stop. Well, I the, do, the important thing is that you found a way to feel superior to both groups. Wait, I just stole an XKCD Coke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Webster, for the definition of the week. No, I know. I, 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 I agree with you. Um, it actually... What's very interesting is, is something that I don't think I've brought up on the podcast, but please forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's something that I wrote about in an article that I wrote for, for the Team Legacy website, teamlegacy.net, um, and it's called, uh, <clears throat> if I recall correctly, Playing to Win, uh, what was the, the subtitle I used for that? Uh, Fail Better, if I recall correctly. Um, in there, I talk about, I think I talk about, uh, something called the Dunning-Kruger Effect. And this is a psychological phenomenon whereby experts in a field know enough to know that they don't know that much or they know enough to know their own fallibility, right? And so experts in a field will always underrate their own skill. They'll always underassume their own skill, whereas people who are completely bad at any subject or skill will always overrate their skill or knowledge because they don't know enough to realize that they don't know anything. So that's a very weird situation where you have people who think very highly of themselves being the people who are the poorest at at, at actually knowing or doing something. And the people who score the best at doing or knowing something are the people who think the least of them, less of themselves, not the least of themselves, but they think less of their actual ability. So I think that has a lot to do with it. But I also think it has to do with a lot of the defense mechanisms that people have around the ego. People, you know, there's the, there's just, people need to feel good about themselves, right? That's what people want to do. Everyone wants to feel good about themselves. And what happens when your ego is threatened? What happens when your pride is threatened? When something that you think of as this is a core part of myself is the fact that I'm good at playing a Mesmer in Guild Wars 2. When that gets threatened, Your sort of subconscious tries to compensate by using a defense mechanism. Oh, that person clearly doesn't know what they're talking about because that would mean that I was wrong or I was worse than I think I am. So you have this sort of defensive reaction that causes people to go, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I've done the numbers and he's a jerk. So I think that is um, that That is part of it. By the way, that is part of it. So I don't know where I'm going from there, but I think that's that's very much part of it. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think that's that's kind of that's kind of uh, we've 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 played it out. Now I think there's a lot of connotation that, and this is a very interesting subject because usually people who self-define as casuals in an MMO will vastly outnumber people who are considered hardcore like usually the hardcore people in wow at least at a given moment uh were the people that were raiding for example doing the hardcore raids or the hardcore pvp you know where they were really getting into the game and you know sort of doing the the nitty-gritty stuff and they were on the forums and they were you know talking about buffs and nerfs and this needs to be changed because it makes this dungeon too easy too hard blah 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 and then the casual people 
never really go to the forums. They don't even really understand what the meta of the game is. They don't understand what mechanics are considered overpowered, underpowered. They just make up their own thing. And by and large, for at least a large chunk of World of Warcraft's time, I think the casual players, the people that really didn't pay attention too much and get into the game that much, that's how I'm de- defining it in this case, outnumbered the people that were, in this definition, hardcore, really playing at the deep end of the game. Whether they were doing it right or wrong, they think that they are because they're putting a lot of time and effort into it. I, I now, mean, I don't want to who this, should, let's say, okay, let me ask you, Jay, who should the developer listen to? The people who re- don't really know what they're talking about, they haven't delved into the mechanics as deeply as these other groups, but they outnumber them by a severe margin. Well... I, I, well, I was going to say that you can't, no one could self-diagnose themselves as to being hardcore or casual. That's like, that's like asking a drug addict, are you addicted to Self-identify. drugs? Course, Self-identify. Self-identify. Yeah, of course, of course you're going to say, no, I'm not addicted to drugs. I remember <laughs> playing with someone in WoW who, you know, you know, he was in the guild or whatever, and he was a guild leader. You know, I was trying to level a guy. I'm like, man, you know, it's really taking me a long time to level my guy. How do you have six level 80s? He's like... Oh, you know, I'm pretty casual, you know, like I'll come home and I'll play, you know, and then I'll do this and I'll do that. And I'll keep on playing and playing. I'm like, you realize you just told me you, you play, you know, 60 hours a week. How do you consider that casual? That's not, by my because definition, that's not casual. Because people don't, sometimes people see negative connotations on one or the other and they want to yeah. identi- self-identify as but, the other one. I see where you're going with that. But but getting what you, what you were asking, let's, let's say, um, talk about my well, definition of it, and we'll t- we'll we'll say that there's a split between the people who play a lot and play people that don't play a lot, and the people who yeah. play a lot are at that high end, know a lot about it. You're the you're 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 Arena Net or you're Blizzard. Who do you listen to? Um, because usually they're all they're you know, asking for. Let's say usually they're asking for different things. Who do you listen to? You listen to uh, the logical That's... thing would be listening to the majority. And, you know, that if that if that's hardcore people or not hardcore people and you can't really go by the forums because, I mean, you, you get the ideas from them from the forums, um, but then you have to go to the to the data and seeing how it's affecting things. So if like if if, for example, in Starcraft, if everyone's saying, oh, Terran's OP, blah, 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 you know, I, people are going <laughs> to say that, but you can't just all of a sudden say, well, you know, um, Billy Bob three four five on the forum said that Terran's overpowered, so I think we should go change Terran. No, you you go and you look at the stats and you see how Terran's winning and what things are you know what needs to be balanced. So you can't just automatically you can't just side with one or the other. You take what they say, you take what both people say into account, but in the end you need to get some data and some evidence to make those changes. I uh, like I agree with you, and I agree with you in that. I mean, in my regard, I feel that, in, well, in Blizzard's case, um, they really do cater to the casual for the fact that one, it is the majority, and two, that's their money maker. I think many times it comes back to money, and the fact that the hardcore is such a small portion it, it of always, the population. It, it always comes back to money. <laughs> oh yeah, see, but it's like the the hardcore is such a small population, if. Let's say that population is 2% of the, the entire population. Why would you necessarily listen to them when you have 98% of the population giving you more money and bringing more casuals in? It would make no sense from a marketing or a business standpoint. So from that, I, I really feel that you know, if I were Blizzard or ArenaNet, I would, I would listen to the casual player or the majority. All right, Freelancer, you're making an eSport. Who do you listen to, the casual or the hardcore? You can't make an eSport without the casual. I mean, everybody has to start at casual. So I guess uh, beginning, I would listen to the casual players because they're the ones that are going to form your later, um, here we go, using hardcore. They're going to form your later competitive players. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, now later on when there is the, the macro game's been developed, we all know you know, generally what skills and abilities do what, and uh, everybody has their hand about what classes are good at different particular setups. Um, Then you start listening to your more professional players. I mean, that's just natural. But um, it's, let's all, let's all be straight here. It's going to first come down to, like, when you look at WoW and Lotro and Warhammer and stuff, it's always been about money. I mean, they are selling a product here. We we got to get out of this delusion that we are, 
you know, trying to shape this perfect game. When it comes down to it, this is a paid, you know, staff of developers, artists, etc. that have to make money. They have to be paid, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just they have to look at the statistics, and they know, kind of like what Jay was saying, and, um, well, what everybody's been saying, really, is that the larger majority is casual players. So if you have a let's say 8 million casual players that are complaining that a quest is taking too long or that I can't kill enemies because I'm an elementalist and elementalists suck, you know, then they're going to listen to that immediately because those are also the potential players that might step away. Now, you also got to consider the fact, and this just occurred to me, there's no monthly subscription in Guild Wars 2. So not that ArenaNet or NCSoft... I was NC just about Soft, to go there. Yeah, not that ArenaNet or NCSoft would ever... You know, say to hell with it because you already bought our game, you know, Sayonara. But uh, <laughs> but you know, if they want to develop that esports scene, they got to um, they got to cater to the mass majority. Which I don't care what that st- that census says. The mass majority is if you could label them a casual group. And I think that if you go to any discussion forum now, even like uh, Guru, for example, which has the mass majority of all of your most excited players for Guild Wars 2, the majority, and they will sing, they will candidly tell you this on, on the spot, is the majority is casual. And um, therefore, they kind of want their wants and dreams to come first before ca- uh, hardcore players do. So, and there's, I don't think there's anything <clears throat> wrong with that. All right, so let me rephrase a new question. Um, because I kind of had a different answer than what you guys said. If you have a game where you're trying to make sort of a, a competitive esport or, or something to that effect, or at least make a good PvP scene, and um, I, my belief has always been that if you're talking about balance, for example, between classes, between sides, between characters or, or builds or what have you, that you're going to want to balance the game for high-end play between really skilled players before you balance it for the low-end game of people that have only been playing it for, you know, two, two months or something like that or two weeks and have not yet learned all that there is to learn about the game. Because oftentimes, if you have a skill that maybe once you learn how to use it can be incredibly powerful, but... You have people who are telling you it's useless because they don't know how to use it yet. So I, I know I'm asking a different question. Sar points out I'm asking a, de- a very different question now when we're talking about balance. So would you guys say when you're talking specifically about balance, does that change the equation? Does that kind of change your answer rather than just talking about features or, or other new additions or things like that? I, I think it still comes down to data in that you know when you're, when you're balancing something, you can't, you can't just go by what a hardcore person is saying or what a casual person is saying because they are going to give you two different things. Like you said, the hardcore person is going to know more, you know, the higher level uh, play and can give you a little bit more insight. Um, so the way I see it is that you, 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 take a, you might take what the hardcore person says and look into it a little bit more than what the casual person says um, just because the, the hardcore person might find the bigger kind of unbalancing things that are ruining the game whereas the casual person may not focus on something like that but in the end before you make a change i think it still comes down to data and that you got to find where the problem is and how to tweak it um in such a way that everyone's happy but i I, I mean i don't know if i really answered your question or not i sort of think it's the opposite vega um i think it's the casual players in an mmo that find the the broken stuff because they're the ones that are given more time to find out what's working for them and in the midst of them trying to find out what works for them because they don't have that aptitude to tell what skills are working versus the ones that aren't they are the ones that find just by freak chance well i I don't know how that happened but apparently it happened with these skills and then other people hardcore players or more um or the intellectuals, we'll call them, are the ones that look at him and say, I wonder why that guy is doing so well with that build. And then they break it down, and then they figure out why. Um, uh, th- that's just my experience. Like like in Warhammer, um, with the Witch Elf and, and the stealth classes in general, the um, uh, Witch Hunter also, there was a big issue with that where 
a lot of I'm not going to go into it specifically, but there's a lot of cheap builds that were coming out with them right off the get go. Those cheap builds were being built by casual players. They were never used in a in a competitive sense, like out on PvP scenes. But um, it took those players to break them down to say this is what's making them right or wrong. And I, I think it's just a collaboration of a lot of different groups. I think Jay comes up with probably the right answer, which is in a case where you can get data, data will probably tell you more than anything else. Okay, d- if, if we're trying to balance skill X, some people are saying it's overpowered, some people are saying it's underpowered. In all of the instances, in all of the matches that have ever been played, is skill X present on the winning side like 90% of the time? And not on the other side. Like, can, if you can, if you can take that data and sort of split it up and give you some more information that way, it's not always perfect because it's all correlation, which of course does not necessarily equal causation. It only implies causation. Um, you can still come. You know, you have to you have to make the variables and do your 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 statistics and 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 things like that. And but that can also be very useful. But then it comes down to the guy balancing the game and the producer and okay, this is going to make it harder on casuals that didn't dedicate enough time to learn how to use this skill. Cause it has a high skill ceiling. Do we want to make that skill ceiling higher and make it a bigger gap between people who know what they're doing and people who don't, or do we want to shrink that gap and piss off, you know, the people that really are sinking their heart and soul into the game and they're going to feel cheated because everything's being dumbed down for the new guys. Um, those are very difficult decisions and I don't, (laughs) I do not, uh, I I do not want to ever have to make them. I I just want to be on the sidelines critiquing all the people who have to make them (laughs) because that, that's a hell of an easier job. I tell you what. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to being able to do that when the game comes out. Um, so (laughs) anyway, uh, any final thoughts sort of on this, uh, this topic here, uh, before we, we close out the show, anything I'm missing any uh, anything from the peanut gallery in the in the chat room? What are we? Anything else? Um, I got a question for you, Vega. Um, just kind of casual. Where would you pull your data from? Would you pull it more likely from the the tournament scenes, like the the matches themselves, the the high, you know, the the notable ones, or would you try to aim on a more mass audience, like all of the casual structured PvP setups? I think that, um, I mean, you want to get a bigger pool that you're pulling information from. So, I mean, if there's a lot of tournaments going on, if there's a lot of, you know, how they're saying they're going to have, like, the the weekly tournaments and monthly tournaments, and, you know, if there's a lot of that going on with people doing that sort of, I guess, more hardcore kind of uh, competitive scene, then, yeah, that that'd be the best. If you have a big tournament scene, that's the best place to get your data from. Um, you don't you want to go to wherever you're going to get the biggest pool from because that'll give you the most um, variables and the most things to look at. Freelancer wants to show something. I don't know. <laughs> we're talking, we're talking, guy in our, talking, guy in our chat. We're talking oh. about mice. That's why we're <laughs> that's why we're all holding up our mice. I got, I got a rat. Well, we'll have to do a uh, an episode, Bridger, uh, with all the community members, especially all of our watchers here on uh, on gaming hardware and whether it's relevant to skill. How about that one? Ooh, that'd be an interesting <laughs> one. Now, I why did everybody a, all of a sudden go crazy about char plushies? Like it just exploded in there <laughs> for they, some uh, reason. Because they, uh, they you them, can now buy them again. Stock. Yeah. yeah oh, oh, you mean you mean this little fella, Charlie oh, the Char. Oh. Yes, yes, I have. I didn't him. realize how big they were. I they are. Like they're huge. Little, I thought it was this little tiny thing, and that's like the size of my dog. His his <laughs> eyes get covered. Yeah, his eyes get covered by his eyebrows. You can't even see. He's got yellow eyes. Anyway, I, yeah, I have we that. ordered three of them so we could do some. No, no, no. Sort they of... think I, this thing. It actually said when it came with. I don't know if it has the tag anymore. It says Charlie the Char. It was lame, but my my wife likes it. Anyway, is our anniversary gift. So that so now we've got Char plushies. Um, so I guess that is the news that we missed, isn't it? Uh, the Char plushies are now in stock. Uh, we should have <laughs> led with that one. That was the big news of the week. What is a plushie? And this is a plushie. It's like a stuffed animal kind of thing. Like, um, you know, like a, it, it's plushie. That's what it is. That's what people call him. He's even got armor. He runs. No, he doesn't run. You um, open up Bridger's closet and like 20,000 beanie no, babies No, 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 no. Not me. But we have, <laughs> and we that- have, we have Snoopy. We have we have other Snoopy. <laughs> we have other Snoopy. 
other Snoopy. I have no idea who this Bridger guy is, by the way. Cloud. <laughs> my wife How made this Snoopies one. How many Snoopies do you have? I, I don't have them. They're not mine. They're my wife's. That's why I got her the char plushie. Sure I think this are. one actually dances. Oh, no. He, 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 his sunglasses go up for some reason and he squeeze. And then he laughs. Actually, I think I got her that one, too, now that I think about it. I usually I get her the cool Rex. stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this here for when he switches back to the... What? What is that? What is that? Ah! I, for one, like to, in, like to welcome our new ant overlords. I don't even know what that is. Is that a beetle? Like, what's going on there? It's, it's okay, we are going door. way off topic. <laughs> I think we need to move on. Um, so... Uh, we're at about an hour here, so I think we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, I think Freelancer had something uh, to say before we went off the air. Uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of plug in um, that uh, Team Legacy is doing a survey for that covers all the major aspects of personality um, and your gaming traits. You know, are you hardcore or casual, Bridger? Uh, <laughs> uh, all sorts of really fun things. It's uh, I linked it a lot earlier in the chat. There, it is on Guru under the main community news section. I'll link it in chat for you guys. But um, we want to try to pull in. You know, we talk a lot about statistics about how um, you pulled up census there, and it talks about a few little things. This is like a five-page survey that covers your habits, your which you would admit are your good or bad habits, which you would say your hours played, not just hours played, but how you play, um, a whole bunch of different things. And we're curious, uh, not, for, not only for Tales of Tyria, but for the community in general, how gamers would... Um, would answer these in general and on a much deeper level. So it does take a little bit of time. It's like five, ten minutes. Not too bad. Um, but grab yourself a Coke uh, and, and take it for us if you can. I just want to throw that out there at the end of the episode here. And it'll get us, especially uh, Tales of Tyria, we can kind of share some of that info because a lot of it's going to be really interesting about um, especially the psychology traits of different MMO gamers. So if you could check it out, awesome. Thank you. All right, I'm about halfway done since you started talking about it. Let me see. We can put a note to that, a link to that in the show notes. Can you do that? Yep, we could do that. All right, let me see. It's on Guru. It's on Guru's most. main page. Easy for everybody to pick up. All right, there. Old Wars two. All right, I'll finish that later. All right, so I guess then. Uh, any final thoughts on here from you, from you other guys uh, on on our topic here? Hardcore casual. Um, so I, I don't think I actually asked you guys. What do you guys consider yourselves? Does everybody here consider themselves hardcore? Whether I'm that's right the, or wrong. <laughs> I'm the metro core. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for <laughs> tuning in to Tales of Tyria, episode number 13, guys. 13, can you believe it? We're almost, almost there. Almost. Kind of almost. almost there. Almost to 14. <sighs> almost to 14, we're yes. Almost to 14. <laughs> Next week, we're going to talk about lore. We're going to talk about uh, the Ghosts of Ascalon book. The week after that, I definitely want to bring up competitive versus non-competitive. Playing to win versus playing to fun. I'm sure that's going to be a fantastic episode. Unless, of course, we get some information and or invitations to a beta before then. Hmm. Doubtful. Two weeks from now, let's find out, ladies and gentlemen. I am Bridger. For everyone else, signing off. Send us email, feedback at talesofteria.com. See you guys later. See you guys. There was one of my guild members who was like, you know, it would be great to, to develop your teamwork, you know, skills and stuff. No. No, no, no. The worst thing you could do with a bunch of friends is play League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it like playing Risk? <laughs> no, worse trust me. It's playing. way you, worse you than grow, playing Risk. You start you start with four other friends and you end after twenty matches with four enemies. <laughs> and the only reason oh, yeah. still, the only reason you're still with them is because you know that saying, um, keep your friends close, your enemies closer because that's <laughs> No no no. The only happens. reason you're still with them is because the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. That's the only reason you're still <laughs> with them. Because playing with those Souls is still better than playing with some random guy that you can't you, talk you to. Spend, At I least the guys on TeamSpeak you can swear at. Him.